that's it. Oh, thank you. Um, anything else you wanted? Uh, um, yes, there is, as a matter of fact. Female company. How are we fixed? Pardon? Ever been to Runcorn? Oh, no, I can't say that I have. Oh, you yeah, haven't lived, Mavis. I'm going there this afternoon, delivering no, for Baldwin. I'm playing my cards right. I could finish early and uh, yeah, have the day off. So, how are you fixed? <laughs> I don't know what you're suggesting, but whatever it is. It is, Mavis. A run in the country in the van, isn't it? Driver's mate on the Runcorn run. I can see you now, the open road, the wind in your hair. We can stop by the canal bank and have a little picnic. I'll tell you what, you. let's bring your raincoat, though. Look, I've got work to do. I can't just drop everything and go Thank waltzing you. off to run. Oh, well. I'll keep a smile on my face and, and an ache in my heart. Bye, Fred. Bye. Did I hear you turn down an invitation? Well, I don't know if he was serious. But whether it was or not, it wouldn't go anywhere with him. Quite right. That was Tony Cunliffe on phone. Betty Turpin, policeman lodger. Well, what did you want? The pleasure of my company this evening. That's the second time he's asked me. And what did you say? Same as you said to Fred G. Well, as far as I can make out, he's Bet Lynch's property. No, you want to tell Tony he's working too hard. Oh, that's a policeman's life, isn't it? They can't just please themselves, you know. Oh, hey, look. The state of it! Oh, it wasn't like this at closing time. This is his after time mob. Oh. Morning. <coughs> Bit late, aren't you? Our acres late. Well, you've only got an hour to get this place ship shaped before we open. We have? Yeah, well, Hilda's still off, isn't she? So come on. We must be daft. <laughs> well, let's get sane for once. Look, Billy, we don't get paid for cleaning this place. It's an emergency, isn't it? We've all got to turn to. You can't expect Hilda to come in here the way Stan is now. We don't expect Hilda to do it. You said you'd get somebody else in, temporary. <laughs> I'm not made of money. Listen, you're making enough out of them folks to make it all the mess. <clears throat> While you're stood there moaning, you could get on with cleaning this place, couldn't you? Now I'll go and put the kettle on and make us a nice cup of tea, eh? Yeah, you go and put the kettle on and come back with a mop in your hand. Eh? It's an emergency, Billy. I mean, we don't mind mucking in, look, as long as you do your fair share. And anyway, it's your midnight mates who've made most of this mess. Only fair you should clean up after them. Come on, Randy. It's good for you. You're a faddy lad. It's just as good as lettuce, is this? Hello? Hello? Elaine, where are you? Oh, I've got your postcard, yes. Very interested me in Casablanca, yes. Uh, Winston was there, you know, during the war. Still, you don't remember that, would you? Oh, all right, all right, I'll listen. Did they? Oh, good, yes. Well, I'll be looking out for you. Now, you know how to find me, do you? Right. Right. Yes, all right. We're having company around this, so think on, best behaviour. Now, we don't want to be showing ourselves up, do we? Dragging our dinner out floor. And uh, I'll have some cream crackers <clears throat> and a tin of baked beans. I don't have the large size now, Al. Oh, no, sorry. I bet your life's hectic these days, isn't it? <laughs> hectic? How do you mean? Oh, your lodger's got a new boyfriend, don't you? Oh, you mean the policeman? I suppose she brings him home at all hours. I bet you're forever falling over his helmet, Aunt Landon. Yeah, well, I didn't think it was going to be like that, to be honest. But, in fact, I don't think he's been round more than the once. You know what Bet's like, though. She uh, reckons it's the big romance. As far as I can see, though, it's all come to note. Is that it, then? That's it. Didn't reckon me up. Uh, £3.34, then, please, love. Yeah. Hello. Yep. Hello, Hilda. How's Stan today? Well, he seemed a bit brighter when I saw him last night. Oh, good. Well, give him my best, won't you? Yes, I will. Uh, I'll be going in again this afternoon. Ta-ra, right. love. Ta-ra. Will you give Stan that from me? Oh, Tar. Tar very much, Al. Yeah, well, it'll cheer him up a bit, won't it? He wouldn't thank you for a bunch of grapes, would he? <laughs> no. Uh, same again, Betty, look, please. Oh, okay. uh, here, would you? I might as well, I. Right? Uh, Teddy? Uh, no, sir. I'm running Mrs. Ogden to the hospital in a few minutes. Oh. Yeah, I bet you missed that when you here, don't you? It must be worth a barrel of ale a week to this pub. <laughs> sure, Teddy. Not if I'm driving. Anyway, best be off. See if Mrs. Ogden's uh, ready for going out. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll tell you what, Jack, he's got more sense than you when it comes to drinking and driving. He must get his brains off his man. You know what, Vera? She's dead from the neck up. 
Yeah. They do say that you can tell if a woman's got brains by looking at the man she marries. <laughs> Thank you. I think you've been shot down, Jacqueline. <laughs> Put another scotch in there, will you, darling? How's your old love life, then? You still doing a term with that PC plot? If you mean Tony, he's a sergeant. Well, they still wear the big same old boots, don't they? Are you still going out with him? Chance would be a fine thing. I'm stuck behind this bar six nights a week and he's working most of the time when I'm not. Well, oh, he's no good to you, this boyfriend of yours. You want some work shy layabout? Oh, no thanks. I've had plenty of them. Excuse me, please. It's still coping, are we? Well, oh, more or less. Hey! They never came from Newton and Ridley's. Too right they didn't. Why should they get all the profit? Look, if Newton and Ridges catch you buying from that cash and carry, they'll be very nasty. You must be careful, lovey. Oh, over, Betty. Ever since you've had that copper living with you, you've become a right old Jonah. Is it all? It's my sister's girl, you see. Uh, I'm the only family she's got left nowadays. She's been sailing around the world for five or six years now. Your lad's on the boat, Cindy Ken. That's right. I didn't know you had a grown-up son, Kenneth. Yes, in the Merchant Navy. Doing well, too. Oh, well, my niece isn't exactly in the Navy. Hey, she'd have some fun if she was. <laughs> <laughs> no, on these big liners, they're more like civilians like. She's a trained hairdresser. You'd be amazed at the famous people she's had to her hands. Film stars a lot. Oh, she's uncle, Jack. <laughs> she's a hairdresser, not a French polisher. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey, no, listen, I've got time to stand here talking. Give me a bottle of sherry, foreign. Yeah, Percy, I always thought you were the sort who'd make a point of buying British. Well, in general and on principle, yes, but not the sherry. Now, if it's only me drinking it, Kenneth, then it would definitely be all more Empire produce. Because there's nobody more patriotic than me. But it's a lady, you see. Of course, you'd always drink it fast and think of England. That's what your true patriot would <laughs> oh, do. Ah, well, she picked up some very funny ideas in foreign parts. I can't force my principles on there, can I? Tell her. Bye-bye. Oh. Bye-bye. Oh, we shouldn't tease him, I suppose. Oh, we should have. We stopped to think we didn't like him. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, you said you'd sorted these Christmas cards out. They're all mixed up. I did sort them out. They were all in order last night. But you know it is, don't you? It's them girls from the Comprehensive. In other words, put it down to the younger generation. Like this one here. Mavis and I have just agreed it's all your fault. What is? Whatever's wrong, it's all down to you and your age group. You must have been listening to me, Dad. Here, I've brought them pies you ordered. One meat, one meat, potato. Great. That's How much do we owe you, love? It's all right, the paid for. That's right. Well, back to feeding trough. Ta ta. Ta ta. Hey, I'm ready for me pie and all. Mm. Which is meat and potato? Well, it's that one, but you said meat. No, I asked for meat and potato. No. No, before I went next door to order them, I said I'm having meat and potato, and you said meat. I'm potato. You've given wrong order. I always have meat and potato. Because you have vegetarian leanings, I know. And I usually have meat because I'm more carnivorous than you. But today, I definitely said I'm potato. Can I make a suggestion? Oh, I didn't see you come in. Whichever one of those pies you have, you're going to be starving hungry by tonight. So why not come out for a meal with me? We've been through all this on telephone. That was hours ago. Plenty of time for a lady to change her mind. Now, you, don't you think the boss deserves a good night out? <laughs> it's not up to me to say. I come round specially to see if you'd had second thoughts. Walk right past the door of the flying horse. That's how serious I am. You're persistent, I'll say that. Me only virtue. What do you say? Yes, all right. You're on. <laughs> sure the fella at number seven, Nightingale Terrace, gets his paper. I know all about that awkward letterbox, but cram it in somehow. Right. Tra. Tra. Right. Well, I think I'll leave you to it, then. You're going home now, Rita? Well, there won't be much happening. You can cope, can't oh, you? Yes, I can cope. <laughs> I'll have to, won't I? Well, I want to have a bath and take me time getting ready for going out tonight. Actually, I was surprised that you agreed to go out with him. I mean, well, especially when you said that he was Bet Lynch's boyfriend. Yes, well, it seems I wasn't quite right about that. I made a few discreet inquiries. Oh, oh, I see. So you were hoping he'd ask you to go out again. I don't know. Yeah, perhaps I was. Well, you see, this is like a first time for me, this going out tonight. And I was thinking that this afternoon, but, well, I didn't like to say anything. I mean, it is the first time that you've been out with anybody since, well, since Len died. Well, I didn't want to say anything to upset you. I know, you didn't. Oh, Rita, I don't think there's anybody around here who would blame you for wanting to go out and enjoy yourself. Oh, tell me what they think. I mean, as a matter of fact, I don't expect to enjoy myself, but I do think I ought to make the effort. I mean, just lately I've been finding myself getting, well, not peculiar exactly, but wanting to draw the house around me like an old coat, you know? 
Wanting everything just so, getting a bit too fond of a boiled egg on a tray in front of telly. I mean, I don't want to end up like some women do, all turned in on themselves and scared of losing their cosy little solo routines. I hope you're not hinting that I'm like that, Rita. Now, you said that, not me. Right, I'll go and get my coat. Apart from that, I quite like the fella. Go on in, love. It is nice to see you. It's nice to see you. Let's have a look, can't you? Oh, <laughs> you're getting bonnier. Oh, yeah, it must be that sea air. Still, you get your good looks from our side at family, not your dad's. A very nice chap and no disrespect intended, but he was no oil painting, was he? You're looking very well. Well, why shouldn't I do? I mean, I look after myself, don't I? Everything in moderation, that's the secret. <laughs> I had a commanding officer in the army. He used to say something, you're a fanatical moderate, that's what you are. He thought the world of me. I like your new place. It's much nicer than the old flat. Oh, it's not bad, is it? It goes with the job, of course. Uh, how long is it since you were up here, Oh, then? you've got a butchie. What's his name? Randy. Your Auntie Elaine's come to see you. Can he talk? Can he talk? He's a marvel. He said, God save the Queen. Go on, say God save the Queen, Randy. Well, he's not used to you yet, but when he is, he can't do enough for you. You won't be stopping, won't you? I haven't come all this way just to spend five minutes with you. Good, because I've got something in the oven. Take a good deep smell. What should I be smelling? Steak and kidney pie. You used to love it when you were a little girl, <laughs> didn't you? I hey. still do. Now, I want to know what all your plans are. Where you're going, who, with and why? I haven't got any definite plans, to tell the truth. My next cruise is the Christmas cruise, so I don't have to be back on board for nearly a month. Anyway, I'd like to spend the night, if that's all right with you. All right? It's marvellous. I mean, you could be double. Well, don't you follow won't we, Randy? I, I just wondered if you were thinking of coming over this weekend. Oh, y yes, I know you did, but... Of course he was. He's always pleased to see you. No, well, he's much the same, really. The nurses are very good with him. Oh, no. No, there's nothing like that to worry about. I'd let you know if there was. Oh. Oh, no, well, if it's awkward, Trevor, you mustn't think of it. Your work comes first. Yes, I I'll keep you in touch. I'd better ring off now because I'm using Mrs Fairclough's phone. Y you take care and all. Yes. Bye, love. I, um, I, I don't know how much the call will be, do you? Oh, give over, Hilda. I don't want any money. Oh, that's very good of you. You know, I, I wish our travel lived a bit nearer. Well, you do when somebody's poorly, don't you? Yeah. Of course, he did come and see Stan last weekend, but it, it's very difficult for him with his work and everything. How is Stan, Hilda? Well, very cheerful, considering. Do they say when he'll be home? No. No, well, they don't, do they? They never tell you very much, really. Seems strange in the house without him, though. Yeah. It's a funny feeling. Mm. Yes, well, I'll, uh, I'll get off to the hospital again now, because he likes to see me. He's always looking out for me when I come in the ward. <laughs> You're off out somewhere, too, by the look, have you? <laughs> yes. Somewhere a bit more cheerful in the hospital, I bet. I should expect so, Hilda. Yes, well, I'll say to her, then, and thanks again. Enjoy yourself. <sighs> right, then. I'm away. Suppose you're going birding? Yeah, you could say that. No, too much birding, you know, ruins your health. <laughs> How can you stand there, supping and smoking, a walking government health warning and tell me? I am telling you as a father, too much birding. It's my duty to tell you these things. Oh, yeah? Well, I mean, whether you're taking any notice is entirely up to you, but before you go, I will say just one thing. What's up, then? Get us a drink in. Bet. Get me down a pint, will you? Do you know, it must be a wonderful feeling when you get to be an old man and your big son treats you. Yeah, just less of the old man bit. I'm in the prime of life, me. Correction, approaching me prime. I think it's due about 12 o'clock. Now, if you play your cards right, you can just about reach the benefit. Thanks all the same, Jack, but I'm hunting bigger game at the moment. Oh, I know what you mean. Evening all. How a woman can knock about with a cop, I'll never know. It's against nature, you know. Well, why don't you explain this to Tony yourself? He'll probably be popping in later on. Is this your boyfriend in blue you're talking about? Yes. Well, listen, I don't want him around here at closing, so if he comes in, you knock off ten minutes early and take him somewhere else, all right? 
<laughs> you know what that means? He's got another one of his after time sessions planned. Well, there's no wrong with that. I like a little bit of after time drink of myself. Of course you do, lover. You like it before, during, after, and instead of you, don't you? <laughs> Change of plan, by the way, Billy Lad. How about going to the bar? Well, it's great. I haven't been for ages. Have yeah, we got time for a drink? What we got? Oh, right, yeah. Oh. Be a little late, but uh, we'll miss the first race, not to worry. It break greyhound racing all right for you two girls. Oh, so long as a back a winner. <laughs> you stick with me, darling, I'll show you how it's done. Well, I hope you've better look on dogs than you have on roulette, Billy. Oh, down a bit, were you, uh, last night? <laughs> Just a little bit, yeah. Hundred pounds, you told me. <laughs> some days you win, some you lose. Hey, Bert. Betty, you'll be looking after things here tonight. I'll be back about tennis, all right? Your boss is going to the dogs, love. Yeah, with notice. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. It's quite a nice place, this. One of your regular haunts. No, I've only been in once or twice. I usually drink down at the Flying Horse. It's handy for the station. Do you know, I'd almost given up hope of getting you to come out with me. In fact, if you hadn't done tonight, I think I might have done. Well, I wasn't playing hard to get or anything. Just didn't want to tread on Bert Lynch's toes. Oh, like I told you, there's nothing special between Bet and me. I just take her out once or twice. I like the girl, mind you. So do I. In my game, you get to meet a lot of people like Bet. What you're bound to, hanging around the pubs. Instead of being home doing the washing up with a wife and putting up shelves, you're leaning on some bar talking to a barmaid. Well, at least you're honest enough to admit it. Yeah. I met a few barmaids in my time. Never met anybody quite like you, though. There's no special about me. You underestimate yourself. It's like you've been stood up again, darling. Mm. Sorry? You've been watching that door all the time I've been standing in. OK, lads. Last orders. He's no good for you, this fellow of yours. Well, it's not his fault. It's his job. Well, there's only one thing to do if you want to see more of him. Get yourself arrested. See ya. Good night. Mike. Oh, you crawl. <laughs> hey, Jack. Who's that last with Percy over there? Oh, it can't be a girlfriend. He could pull one of them, could he? <laughs> he may be pulled her on one of his midnight jobs, then. I bet he's got a <laughs> for peeping from way back, and I bet that's his probation officer. <laughs> <laughs> she can bind me over any time, huh? You've definitely got a kinky streak, you, Fred. <laughs> I bet when you go ashore on this Greek island, you, you never see a steak and kidney pie. <laughs> no. Mind you, we eat all right, really. You've always been a smashing cook, though, haven't you? Especially your pastry. Uh, well, cold hands, that's a secret. You know, you've either got cold hands or you haven't. You're born with them or you're not. Like another drink? No, I think what I'd really like to do is to get to bed. I've gone tired all of a sudden. Oh, it's a bit journey, that. Right, come on. He'll probably surprise us when we get in. Who? Randy. He comes out with you when you're not expected, oh. as clear as a bell. Oh. Hello. Hello. Oh. Can we have your glasses, lads, now, please? Hey, look here. Closing time, and he comes waltzing in with his boozing bowels. Right, girls. What are you having? Is this winnings you're spending? Could be. I thought you were down on the night. Well, broke about even or thereabouts. Yeah, I've never yet met a punter who admitted losing. It amazes me how the bookies ever make a living. <laughs> <laughs> Everything OK, girls? Oh, yes. Things are wonderful. <laughs> you're having me on. Oh, I swear to God, two donkeys stolen in the past ten days. Donkey rustling in Weatherfield. We got one of them back, but there's two blokes claiming it. We'll have an identification parade by the end of the week. <laughs> Make yourself comfortable. They're ah. good little houses, these, aren't they, when they're done up? Was it like it when you got it? No, my husband built it. He was a builder and plumber. Oh, that's handy. Hello. Yeah. That's a silly question, of course it is. Do you know all the photos I've got of my ex-wife and wedding pictures and so on? I don't look at them, they upset me. Do they? Oh, I wouldn't be without my photos. Yeah, well, you had a happy marriage, haven't you? Yes. Would you like a drink? Love a cup of coffee. Right. It'll be instant. Fine. 
Right, lads, I'm away to my bed. Hey, are, you, are you not stopping? We'll be all right for a bit of after time after he's got rid of a few of these dead ends. No, oh, Jack, I've had all I want. I'll see you anyway. Good night, darling. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> okay, lads. Any lads yeah, got no homes to go to? Oh, we yeah, all right for a bit of the old. Uh, have you got any money? Oh, no danger. Come on, love. So why are you supping? You're welcome. Oh, uh, four packs there. Aye, and four scotches to go with them. Hang on a minute. But <laughs> your girls gonna have a drink with me before you go. No, thank you. I've got to go and get my bus, Billy. Hey, come on, Billy boy, splice the flame in main brace. These poor girls have cried out for a drop of mother's ruin. All right, with you in a minute. Right, see you tomorrow, then, girls. All right. Be careful, Billy. You could get done, you know. Betty, don't worry. Stop fretting. Good night. Right. <laughs> what are we having then? Yeah. I mean, he won't be told. I mean, Tony's as good as warned him. He'll be done, you know, if he goes on. Where the hell was Tony, anyway? Oh, he's probably working. Come on. Cheer up. You'll feel better after a night's sleep, lovey. Ah, <laughs> yeah. I better go, you know, so I can miss me bus. No, no, no. See ya. Ta ta. Well, I can take a hint. As soon as I saw that yawn, I got the message. <laughs> no, I've enjoyed myself tonight. Really have. Can't help being tired. I mean, it's just getting up at the crack of dawn to uh, do the papers for delivery, lads. Yeah, I know. You really enjoyed yourself? Very much. So have I. Let's do it again sometime. Soon. I'd like that. Well, I'll say goodnight, then.